All the stars have come in close Just to see you, I suppose And they're a-gleaming You must be dreaming And the sun has said goodbye With a twinkle in his eye He's left the ocean With sweet emotion We go dancing in the rain Riding on a midnight train Away so slow Hello and welcome to episode 34 of Little Big Knits. My name is Salma. I'm coming to you from here in Ottawa, Canada, where I live with my family and our cat, Yoda, who just happens to be sitting over there. This is a podcast about knitting primarily, with some little things dabbled in here and there. I tend to talk about books these days because I'm really into reading. Uh, but yeah, it's primarily about knitting. And um, my name is Selma Knits on social media, so on Instagram and Ravelry. And on Ravelry, we have a group for the podcast called Little Big Knits. You can find the show notes there. I still haven't started putting them in YouTube. Uh, there's an introduction thread, and whenever we have a knit along, that is where the knit along is taking place. So feel free to come and join the group if you are so inclined. I also wanted to say that uh, my project page on Ravelry is, is pretty much up to date. Occasionally I miss a little detail, but my projects are always there. So if you're ever wondering about something that I've mentioned or um, you know you saw something from a previous episode and you don't remember or whatever, feel free to go to my project page and check out uh, the yarn that I've used, the name of the project. Um, they are, I would say, 99.5% of my projects are there. So welcome to today's podcast. Uh, if you are new, hello. Thank you for checking this out. And for those of you who have come back, uh, hello again. And thank you for joining me today. And thank you also to those of you who are coming back and who have taken the time to leave a comment below in, in YouTube. I really, really appreciate it. I love reading the comments. I try and respond most of the time. And I just love the fact that we end up touching each other because your comment really touches me and perhaps the podcast was there to, you know, give you a, a moment of uh, peace from a crazy life or, uh, you know, uh, a moment of just downtime from something else or solace or uh, perhaps a couple of little laughs. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that with me and for taking the time to, to say how you're feeling and how things are going for you and, and so forth. So, <clears throat> a couple of things. Last week, uh, I, pod I didn't podcast, I recorded a prize episode. And so if you participated in last year's Garment Galore Cal and you haven't watched that yet, please go and watch it. I have been contacted by some of the prize winners and I haven't written back to you necessarily, but know that I've seen your, your direct message. Um, but I have not been contacted by absolutely everybody. So uh, if you did participate in that, uh, in the Garment Galore thread, whether it was in the finished object threads or in the chatter thread, please go and check that out and see if you want something. Speaking of knit-alongs, Back by Popular Demand is a Garment Galore cowl for this year. I'm actually going to have two different cowls. So here's how it's going to go. We're going to have another Garment Galore cowl this year, much like the one that we had last year. I'll be hosting it solo this time, and it won't have as many different types of categories. We will have a chatter thread, and we will have a general finished object thread. So this is going to be a Garment Galore Cal 2020 edition, hashtag Garment Galore Cal 2020. And um, it will be for any, arm, gar any garment that is for an adult, okay? So this does not include children's or babies' garments, and it does not include accessories. So it's gotta be sweaters or vests, dresses, and that, that kind of thing. Skirts are fine, uh, jackets. And um, 
ponchos are the one thing that I will accept if it's like a long poncho and it's more it becomes more of an outerwear type of thing then I'm okay with that but not shawls so anyway we are going to have uh, a year long. It is starting as of uh, the podcast, so I will make sure that I have threads in there. Please come in and chat again. We had so much fun last year and whips are welcome. So if you started something or you weren't, um, as long as it's not already finished, if you've started something already, you're welcome to finish it during the Garment Galore Cal and post it in there. So that'll be one cal. Hopefully I've explained it clearly enough. The other knit along that we are going to have is called the It's About Time knit along. And it's about time that I use that yarn or it's about time that I finally knit up that pattern. This is essentially a stash down type of knit along or crochet along. And the idea is that you're using up yarn and or patterns that have been languishing in your stash. If you're like me, you've got yarn that is sitting around. And if you're like me, you buy patterns and then they don't necessarily get knit up right away. So the idea is that you're using up yarn that has been in your stash for over a year. Whips are welcome as well, and double dipping is welcome as well. So if you're knitting a garment, it can belong in the Garment Galore Cal or as well here. This in this particular cal you want anything to be knit that is over 50 grams so it's not just garments it could be a hat it could be mitts it could be uh, absolutely uh, you know socks shawls a blanket anything you like and as I said whips are welcome so if you started knitting something a year ago and it's been sitting there and sitting there and hasn't finished you are welcome to finish that during this knit along crochet along and get it done so this will be called the it's about time cal and so hopefully we'll be saying that to ourselves that it's about time and I'm going to be using that yarn. So there you go. So these are the two cows that I'll be, I'll be starting up as of now and they will go for the remainder of this year. And so as I said, whips are welcome. So if you started something in uh, January or December that ha you haven't had a chance to finish yet um, that fits either the Garment Galore cow and or the It's About Time cow, you're welcome to give them, uh, put them in there for, for both of them. Anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> Just so you know, the house is um, not going to be as quiet as usual because Alejandro just came back from grocery shopping and that's why there was a little cut in my, uh, in my recording. And the kids are still asleep, um, but they will be waking up at some point. So this might be a little bit more of a, um, of a stop and start type of episode. So if I'm over here at one point and I'm over here at one point, and, you know, it's just the way it's going to be. And also I want to tell you a little bit about my tea today. First of all, it's in this mug that you may recognize from previous times. That was from, is it Nicholas Moss uh, Pottery from Ireland that Kate brought me, Kate of Hawthorne Cottage Craft brought me a couple of years ago when she first came to visit. And in it is some tea that was in my advent, um, my advent calendar from Kate this year that I got on the 1st of December from Suki Tea, which is an Irish, I think it's, um, is it from Belfast in fact? It's from Northern Ireland. Um, in Belfast. It's packed in Belfast. Um, Suki tea, and this is not the first time I've had tea from them. Kate had brought me some wonderful apple mint tea before, and this time I got the spiced citrus, and it's a, it's a black tea this time with um, apple and coriander and cardamom and cinnamon and orange slices, cloves, all kinds of, it's just delicious, and I really, really love it. So there's still a little bit left. I don't have it, I usually have it on the weekends, not during the week, because at work, at, during the week I actually usually drink my tea at work. Um, I don't have breakfast or anything hot to drink until I go to work. So that's what I'm drinking today. So is there anything else I need to tell you before we can actually get on with the podcast? I think we're good. Let's talk finished objects. Well, I'm wearing one. I was knitting this the last time we talked. This is the Ranunculus, uh, which is by Midori Hirose, or House of Midori, also known as House of Midori. The Ranunculus. It is the renowned Ranunculus because it has been knit by so many, so many people. And this is my second one. You may recall that I have another one that's kind of a mauve color. I think pretty much 
not long after I finished it, I realized that was not going to be my last uh, ranunculus. And I'll probably stop for now, but I could see a third ranunculus in my future. This is just such a delight to wear. I cannot speak highly enough of it. It is light and yet warm. And because it's got quite a large gauge, you know, it's also, uh, you feel the breezes. So it's not a stifling warm sweater or stiflingly warm sweater. So I find that my other ranunculus, I would wear it when it was 18 degrees, when I normally wouldn't be wearing wool at that point. But because of the airy nature of it, it was really quite pleasant to wear. So this one I made out of a, um, out of two yarns. Uh, one was a Lang Mohair Lux, which was the mohair part of it. And the other yarn was by Ancient Arts. It was their indulgence in space. And I spoke to you about that last time and possibly the time before. So let me just show you what it looks like. Here it is. It's a loose fitting sweater, as you can see. Um, this one ended up with a slightly looser gauge than my other one did. So it's a little bit more billowy than the other one and the arms are also a little bit more, a little wider and didn't end up quite as closed down here, but I decided that I was okay with that because I just want this to be a cozy, easy sweater to wear. So here you can see the sleeves. They ended up, you know, a nice length this time. I didn't have to fight. You may recall that with my first one, I was con I had to re-knit the, the, the sleeves a couple of times and I had to do the I-cord a couple of times. This time I was fine with how they ended. Ended up with a little bit of a, of a loose sleeve, sleeve and I just love the way this sweater sits on the shoulders. I find it extremely attractive. It's very comfortable. I've already talked about its airiness and warmth and the possibilities are endless. So this is my first one. I think I knit it on a six millimeter needle and I really wasn't paying attention to gauge, but I was actually wearing my other one when I was visiting friends and finishing this one. And they commented, hey, the gauge is clearly a lot looser on this one. And that's when I realized that. Um, I was a little worried that it was going to be too loose, but I think it's fine. And I've worn this uh, with this white blouse underneath um, already a couple of times with dress pants to work. Um, it's t you could wear it with jeans. I just feel like it's just such a wonderful piece. I really, really love it. So anyway, can I wax poetic any more about this sweater? I don't know. Now, last week I cast on something and it's finished. I just got the bug. I was, and I'll tell you a little bit about my my works in progress a little later, but I was feeling, I think I was feeling like I needed a palette cleanser um, because the two things that I'm working on, well, they're both sweaters, and I'm suddenly feeling the need for accessories. I had been given two yarns by Kate uh, at Christmas as part of my advent calendar. Uh, by Fine Fish Yarns. They were two yarns from Fine Fish Yarns. Here are the labels. Uh, one was a mohair that was called Grunge Green. It was sort of an aqua greeny uh, mohair. And then there was a sort of purpley pink and green variegated yarn, which was called Mood. And I believe this was a Coradale. It was a non-superwash Coradale sock. That's right. And I knew that I wanted to make the Callan Mai by Kristen of Vullenbein, Kristen Lehrer. Um, and so I just skeined those babies up. You saw a little bit of that at the beginning. And uh, cast on the Callan Mai and uh, finished that Callan Mai yesterday. And I don't actually know which, I think it goes this way. Here it is. I did not do the beading because this is a cowl, which just has the easiest, most addictive stitch pattern. Um, it's meant to be knit with one, one strand of fingering weight and one strand of mohair. And it just is a wonderful, squishy kind of cowl. Just love it. Let me try it on for you. Now, I have to say 
that when I first started knitting it, I was a little bit unsure about the color combination. First, the grunge green mohair was such a stunning mohair and I felt that it was getting a little bit lost in this. Um, but it really muted down the purpley, pinky color that was in the other yarn and, and I liked that. So I decided to go ahead, forge ahead, and this actually works really well with a the purple hat that I have, that's also a Kristen design, the sparkling cider hat. And then I also have a sort of um, a minty green hat that I wear when it's really cold and it will go very nicely with this as well. So although I was a little bit torn about the color combination, I thought this is actually gonna go with what I wear in the winter and that's important because otherwise I won't wear it. I could definitely see though another one of these in my, in my future. It's so squishy and wonderful. It was, I knit it in one week and it just was such a fun knit. I could not stop. I did not expect to, you know, knit it in one week, um, but I just couldn't put it down. So it's done and I love it and I'm going to start wearing it. Um, I absolutely adore, I've got fluffs now all over the place. I adore Kristen's patterns. She has well, first of all, a wonderful aesthetic. If you watch her podcast, Wool and Vine, you know that. Um, but she tends to create patterns that are uh, easy, delightful to make, and effective. They're just really great. I have knit, um, I've knit her hat, I've knit this, I've knit another, I've knit two of her shawls, and I just really, really enjoy her patterns a lot. So, like the Sparkling Cider hat, like the two shawls, uh, the Oracle, and what was the first one? It was something to do with the C. I can't remember now what it was called. I'll put it down here. Um, that's one of the shawls that I have at work, actually, and I, and I just love it. It's so beautiful. Um, all of those patterns, I just could not put them down when I was knitting. They were such a delight to knit. And so she really has a knack for choosing stitch patterns that are easy but have quite a beautiful effect. So lots of people have made this already and some people have put in, in the beads. That's the only modification I did. Otherwise, I just did exactly what the pattern called for. And I love it. So, um, so that's that. I didn't expect to have a second FO, but I did. Another FO that I didn't tell you guys about last time was the pair of socks that I was making for my friend Paul. I'll just put in a picture. I finished those uh, just before Christmas and we saw each other over the Christmas holidays and I gave those to him and then I completely forgot to talk about them uh, in the last episode. So that is what we've got in terms of the uh, finished objects. In terms of what I'm working on. So I finished that cowl last night. I was out with a couple of knitting friends. We were having uh, drinks and dinner and knitting and chatting. And I finished it during that time. So then I continued to work on the Advent socks. The Advent socks are the Cozy Knitters uh, yarn that she does at Christmas time. And my friend Patricia of Paradise Island had gotten me a skein. I finished the first sock minus the heel, which I will do. I'm going to do a cut in heel uh, later on. And I'd started the second sock. So I'm doing quite, I'm quite far along and I will be uh, finishing these up in the next few weeks whenever I have time. I'm not giving these priority. I'm sort of doing them in between. So I finished the cowl last night at dinner and, and I happened to have the sock with me. So I was knitting on that. Then I came home and I, I think I may have mentioned to you, did I? Hmm. Anyway, if I didn't, here we go, uh, that I was thinking of doing sort of a scrap shawl. I've got so many bits of mohair and beautiful bits of yarn from projects that I've made and I thought, you know, the mohair is sort of difficult to add in. You know, people make cozy memories blankets or crocheted blankets and it's a little bit more difficult to do things like that with mohair. You could always uh, have some mohair in there, but mohair can be a little bit on the delicate side, so it's not something that you want that's gonna be thrown around necessarily, and you certainly wouldn't necessarily wanna put mohair in socks. So I had this idea that it would be kind of nice to make a shawl. 
and uh, I've been thinking about it over the last couple of weeks and I decided that I just needed sort of the the guideline for um, for the shape of a shawl. I decided that I wanted to do a crescent half moon type of shape because that's what I find I find the easiest to wear. I'm not a gigantic fan of triangular shawls only because if they're not wide enough they don't necessarily sit prop like sit nicely on the shoulders. Um, my Exploration Station for example I find to be just a really really easy shawl to wear. Actually um, yeah, whereas uh, other shawls that I have, some triangles are great if they're wide enough. If they're not, then they can be really kind of difficult to wear. So I decided I wanted to make a sort of a crescent-shaped shawl, and I decided to use the pattern that I had made already once before uh, as a guideline. I'm not following every bit of it, but I'm using the Coilaheen by uh, Madeline Windsor. That's a pattern that I tested for her, geez, was that two winters ago? at this point and I and it had a really easy way of increasing and it ended up being a really nice shape and nice size so I thought I'm going to use that as a basis for my scrappy shawl. So when I got home last night I just couldn't help myself. I cast it on. This is what I've got so far and I have used I'm knitting on four millimeter needles. So this is the bag that the Callan Mai was in, which is a bag that I made uh, oh, quite a while ago already, uh, when I had a bit of an Etsy shop and I was just learn, sort of figuring out what kind of bags I wanted to make. And I just love this fabric. Um, and so my Callan Mai was in here. And so I just took the Callan Mai out um, and grabbed the needles that were in the bag that I used to make the Callan Mai and cast on the shawl. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I pulled out some uh, some green, and this is the green that was the Artisan Acre, or no, sorry, um, Ancient Arts, Ancient Arts uh, yarn uh, that I had actually given away in the prizes last week, a blue one, and this is what I had used for my Yume last year. So I had this tiny little bob, so I thought, I'm going to I'm going to start the shawl with that. And, and I followed up with the grunge green from my Callan Mai. So as you can see, the grunge green, it really, you know, the grunge green was uh, muted by the pinky purpley green yarn and the pinky purpley green yarn was, was modified and muted by this. So it was kind of, it's a very interesting effect when you put mohair together with, with other yarns. And I just love this, so I wanted it to be in this shawl. I still have some left. So we'll see. And I'm going to use, this is from my ranunculus actually. This is the little bit left. So this is going to go in the shawl. And so I'm just picking up beautiful little bits, especially little bits that can't go into socks, for example. I wouldn't put them into Franken socks or, you know, yarns that are more of a silk content or um, that are, that don't have nylon or things like that. And, and I'm just going to, to put them in here and end up with a as large as I want and then I think I'll be inspired by Stephen West I'll be I'll be I'll be calling on my inner Stephen West to um, probably do something kind of a little bit more um, uh, frilly or chevrony at the very end of the shawl once I get to once I get to the size that I want it to be you'll see this bowl here and I will do a little close-up of the yarns. I have lots of different mohair bits from shawls and sweaters that I've made. You know I have a bit of a mohair thing, right? Um, and so it's all that mohair and maybe not all of it but a whole bunch of it is going to end up in the shawl and I'm going to stripe mohair with um, with other types of yarns and uh, I'm really excited about this actually. I think it's going to be a wonderful thing to knit on here and there. It's going to be a little bit of a palette cleanser and the Coilaheen will be a wonderful guide for how I want to uh, do the increases on here. So if you happen to have a whole bunch of mohair just sitting around uh, and if you've made some shawls and you have a shape that you really enjoy, um, you know, it's what a great thing to do. Anyway, I'm excited about it. So that was something that I just cast on yesterday. 
apart from that, I was working on the Rowwork trees last time. Um, and I showed it to you and I was sort of part way up the body. I have since finished the body. So this is the Rowwork trees by Katrin Schneider. And it is a, a very, very well written and really nice pattern, I have to say. I have not tried this on. I still have to put the two shoulders together, the front and the back but I have essentially finished the front and I think I'm going to block this to see how wide it is before um, I, ca I cast on the sleeves. But I have to put the, the front and the back together. I'm knitting this out of Katia Concept Tweed, which is a silk, mohair, wool, something blend. I can't quite remember actually all the stuff that's in here, but um, it's a silk, mohair, polyamide, and wool blend. And it's called the Katia Concept Tweed. Katia is a Spanish company, and so it's actually in Spanish first. And this is what the yarn looks like. The, co the silk content is actually the majority of the yarn, and it's the kind of a nubby silk, so it's not gonna be the drapey kind of silk. So this will definitely keep its shape it's a very light sweater actually um, it's it's very light in weight and um, yeah I'm just I'm looking forward to it but I'm taking my time with it because of another work in progress the raw work trees as you may recall is being housed in this bag but I think it's going to outgrow it shortly and probably have to get moved but it's been in this bag by Jenna Rose, who is a local um, bag maker and uh, print artist. She prints her fabrics and they are just absolutely beautiful. Where's, oh, there's the, uh, the hummingbird. The other project that I have is in this bag by Dolphina. This is this great bag with this girl who's knitting and a whole bunch of kitty cats little side-eye kitty cat. So I am knitting this sweater for my friend Liz and I've had a teeny tale of woe with regards to this because I swatched. I'm using Peace Fleece which I think I had shown you guys in this beautiful olive color that's got rusts and all kinds of things in it. I swatched with it using I swatched it using a uh, four and a half millimeter needle, and it was great. And uh, I'm making the Telia, which is a pattern by Jennifer Steingas. It's a colorwork pattern. And my gauge was off, but I was okay. I was just going to modify the size of the sweater based on that. And I've never had this happen to me before, but I decided to do the colorwork first. I've done that before. I've just sort of reversed the whole pattern and started at the top. It requires a little bit of weeding through to figure out where, where am I supposed to be ending up, what's happening first, and you have to read the, read the chart backwards as well. Um, but I started the color work with the four and a half millimeter needle, and it was really not working out well at all. It was stiff, and I thought, this is not good. So I realized that I needed to start again. So I had to rip that out, which was, which was a little bit annoying. And I have since started it again with five millimeter needles. <laughs> Sorry, this is a bit of a mess here. And I've got things sticking out. I've got the larger needles. I've barely, barely done any of it, but I'm gonna continue on this weekend. I'm just starting to get into the actual color work. And so I'm using Peace Fleece as the main yarn, but I've got <laughs> this messiness, Let Lopi, for the other colors. So I've got these three colors for the color work that are, and this will be for the body, which are just perfect colors for my friend. 
So I'm really hoping it's going to work out. I'm, I'm still nervous. I think that I now have the right size needles uh, with the five millimeter, um, but I'm, I'm kind of going at it very tentatively because I'm a little nervous that it's going to be stiff again. And at what point, at which point I think I'll have to talk to Liz and say, you know, how are you feeling about this? The gauge of the Peace Fleece and the Lopi are a little different, which is another thing that's making me a bit nervous because I'm concerned that the Lopi is getting lost in there, but I think it'll be fine. I mean, my floats are nice and loose, so I think it'll be fine uh, once it all is together and gets blocked or steam blocked type of thing. So, my hope is to finish the yoke before I get back to the raw work trees. Once I've finished the yoke of this and it looks like it's good, I think I'll fit, do, uh, get the sleeves going on the raw work trees and then work on the body of this. So th that is kind of my plan and then intermittently I'll be working on the advent socks as well as the, um, the scrappy shawl. We'll see what I'm going to end up calling it, but right now I'm calling it the scrappy shawl. So that's what I have been working on. Now I wanted to tell you a little bit about the needles that I was working on the Talia with. As I said, I told you that I was, um, that I cast it on with a 4.5 millimeter needle. That would be Yoda scratching up our sofa. Um, I cast it on with these new needles that I'd gotten that are prim needles and they're their ergonomic needles. They are a plastic needle and they have this little kind of drumstick tip. I think of a snare drum. <laughs> um, and they are, they are rounded here with this little bit of a, a, an, an end there, um, but then they become triangular. They may have been part of the problem with the Telia. I'm not 100% sure. I like them. Um, they're great to work with, but because they're plastic, they're a little grippy. And then the yarn that I was using was a little grippy. And I think that that contributed to, and the fact that they're a 4.5 millimeter needle, I think that contributed to the tightness of, of the color work. I, I wonder if I had used a 4.5 uh, chow goo, which I'm now using on the, on the Talia, if I would have had the same issues. So anyway, I'm not, I would like to use these again for another project to see um, I'm, I'm, I can't endorse these completely at this point, but I do, I think they're a very interesting concept. I learned about these when I took the, uh, the course, the color work course with Arne and Carlos. Arne was walking around knitting and he was using these and uh, really extolled the virtues of these, of these needles. So I think I need to try them with another type of project and see how I feel about it. Um, and with the Talia, uh, what I was going to say earlier was that I've never had an issue where I've needed to go up a size needle for the yoke of a sweater. I know lots of people do that. I've never needed to do it. It's the first time that this is happening to me where the yoke was just, that the, that the gauge that I had swatched with was not working for the yoke. So I'll be kind of curious to see if I end up knitting the rest of the body, which has no color work on it, with the five millimeter needle, or if I'll be going down to a 4.5 millimeter, millimeter needle. So this was a very interesting pur purchase. I'm glad to have tried it. I'm, I'm reserving judgment for a little while longer. So I will use these again when I need a 4.5 millimeter needle and, um, and I will report back at that point. A couple of other little things that have come into my life. One thing is over the Christmas holidays, I bought a couple of skeins of yarn and one of them is hiding in my daughter's bedroom and my daughter is sleeping, so I couldn't get it out. And I forgot to show it to you last time. And that is a beautiful skein of yarn by Arctic Crafts, Bente, from Norway. And it was, I, what was it called? Was it butterbeer? But anyway, it's a beautiful dark mustard color, kind of caramelly mustard color. And um, I'll have to show that to you next time. Also, by the way, my husband is in the, in the kitchen doing a little bit of cooking, so if you're hearing clinging and clanging, that's the reason. And Yoda is quite excited because he's cooking some meat and she's, uh, I can tell she's in there walking around his feet. <laughs> she was meowing a little earlier, kind of asking for some food. So 
they have this uh, they have this cute uh, habit of him sharing some of the things that he cooks with her. Anyway, so that's going to explain some of the noise in the kitchen, but I've just decided to forge ahead because otherwise by the time he's stopping that, the teenagers will be waking up, you know. So anyway, the other skein of yarn that I got was uh, this beautiful skein from Hedgerow Yarns. Now, at Christmas, when I was working on my um, habitation throw, which I'm realizing has been removed from the living room, I was using it just the other evening. I have a funny feeling it's in my daughter's bedroom. Anyway, <laughs> One of the last minis I ended up using, because I ran out of minis because I had a little bit of a decreasing issue and I needed more yarn, was a mini that came from Hedgerow Yarn when I had ordered some other yarn. And as I was using it, I, I was so in love with it that I actually wrote to her and said, do you have this more of this yarn? And she's like, I think that was a one-off, but I can try and recreate it. So I said, well, if you do, let me know. So she did. And although this is a little different from the one that I had, um, I was like, yep, I think I'd like that. It's so darn beautiful. And her speckling is just wonderful. She ended up doing a few skeins of this and putting them in her shop, and she called it Selma. Um, but yeah, it's really beautiful, and it came with this absolutely stunning sort of minty, bluey, icy, bluey, greeny color as, as um, a contrasting color. I'm not convinced that I'm going to make socks out of this. Uh, this might end up going into a shawl. Um, I will skin it up at some point, but it's just so beautiful. And then there was my accidental purchase. I promise, it was accidental. I don't feel terribly bad about it though. So this is what happened. A new pattern came out by Midori Hirose called Karelia. I don't know if you've seen it. It's an absolutely beautiful sweater with kind of a color work here. It's not exactly traditional color work. It's a, a different kind of technique. And I was watching a podcast in Spanish. Her name is uh, Belen and she is from, uh, I think she's from Northern Spain, but she lives in England with her husband who's English. But she does a podcast in Spanish and it's called Tejer en Inglés. And she had test knit the Karelia for Midori Hirose in a stunning emerald green, which just looked beautiful on her. And the pattern was so stunning. And Belen said that she had used the Dererum Ulise yarn. Now that's been on my wish list for about three years. I've been wanting to try that yarn and I've been on their site multiple times and I just never end up actually buying the yarn. And after I saw her podcast and I had seen that she had made the Karelia sweater in that, I thought, oh, the last thing I need is another sweater quantity, but let me just go check. So I went and I found a beautiful blue that I thought would be good for me. And I put it in my cart and then I was looking at some other colors and I put some singles in just to see. And then I thought, okay, I'm not going to buy this now. I'll buy it at another time when, but you know, how much would the shipping cost? And it didn't want to show me the shipping. So I thought, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll take it to the PayPal stage and it'll show me the shipping at that point and then I just won't buy it. And then at least I know how much it would cost me to make the sweater. And when I decide to, you know, I'll get the Ulysse yarn. When I got to the PayPal page, it said, to complete your order, please register with the website. So I thought, okay, fine. So I went back and I registered because it still didn't want to show me the shipping. And I thought, all right, well, after I register, it'll take me back to PayPal and then I'll see the shipping. And after I registered, nothing happened. So I thought, oh, okay, I guess that was that. Something glitched, oh, how come it didn't go back to PayPal? And I thought, well, that's fine. I didn't want to buy the yarn now. I'll buy it at a future time. A few hours later, I happened to be in my, my email box and there is an email from Dererum saying, thank you for your order. <laughs> so by completing the registration, I had completed my order. I was expecting there to be another button saying, you know, complete your order. But just by registering, that completed my order. And I did not realize that. And that's a little sneaky on their part. And only 
then did I see what the shipping was. And the shipping wasn't crazy considering that it was quite a bit of yarn. But anyway, there was something a little bit funny about the way that worked. When I saw the email, I thought, do I write them and say, I didn't actually intend to buy this yarn and I don't want it? Or do I just keep it since I've been wanting it with this yarn for so long anyway? And I decided on the latter. So my accidental yarn arrived. Excuse me, it's still in the brown bag. So I ended up getting six skeins of this beautiful blue. And I'm not sure that the other colors which I got singles of, I will use for the actual flower motif on it. But this pink came and I do think that would be really, really beautiful with it. Um, there's a darker one that came and then I'd seen this gray. Um, so I'm not sure that these three, two of these three will end up in there, although I do quite like that. But whatever the case, I, I'm really, really quite happy to have made this accidental purchase. <laughs> I have to be a little bit more careful in the future um, because I really did not intend to do that, um, but I'm happy and they are really beautiful and I think that even if I don't use this I could easily make a beautiful hat out of this or um, a pair of mittens or something else so I'm not at all displeased and I have as I said I've been to the website so many times and looked at their colors and wondered what they would be in real life so and the price of their yarn is is, is reasonable so it it's nice to be able to get it and actually see what it looks like it's got a very interesting texture as a yarn, I have to say. It, it, it apparently creates an amazing, amazing uh, fabric, and I can see that. It's got a little bit of the Brooklyn Tweed kind of feel to it. Um, it is a, looks like a woolen spun. It's very, very light and airy, and I'm looking forward to making that. So the Karelia sweater that I will have will be blue with most likely some sort of peachy flowers and then I have to figure out what the leafy motif will be like. So that was my accidental purchase. So that is it for the knitting content of the podcast. One final little thing to tell you about that's related to knitting is about Knit City Montreal. I mentioned it before. This is a... Uh, a chapter of Knit City Vancouver. They're actually having a Knit City Montreal for the first time. Um, there will be a knit night hosted by Espace Tricot on the Thursday night, which I'm hoping to go to. I got myself a ticket. They sold out rather quickly. Um, Friday, I hope to spend time with some knitting friends and hanging out and maybe going to Espace Tricot. And then um, I will be helping uh, Patricia of Paradise Island Bags uh, with her stand on the Saturday and the Sunday. So I'll tell you exactly when. Uh, I'll be probably, uh, you know, for a couple of hours here and there on both the Saturday and the Sunday, helping her to, to vend in her stand, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm looking forward to being at the festival, but it'll be nice rather than walking around, um, seeing the people walk around and, and helping her to sell and, um, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to that. So um, please pop by the uh, stand if you're going to Knit City Montreal to say hello. And I'll, next time I'll tell you uh, a little bit more specifically about when I expect to be at the stand. But I'm kind of thinking that I might say that I'll be there at 11 and perhaps at like 2. Um, so that people, if you want to stop by and say hello um, and check out Patricia's gorgeous bags, then you can definitely uh, say hello to me and do that at those times. But I'll be more specific next time. But, uh, and even, even if you just see me walking around, please say hello if, uh, if you happen to watch this podcast and see me there. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be extremely well attended and um, there's quite a bit of hoopla and people are coming from all over the place and there's all kinds of fabulous teachers. So I'm, I'm very excited about Knit City Montreal. The, it's, at the, it's the last weekend of March, the 28th, 29th, I believe. So yeah, 
if you have been thinking about going, I hope you'll consider more seriously. And that is definitely it for the knitting content. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the books I've read in the last month because I've done a lot of listening in the last month. And, oh, do I have a Yoda who wants to come say hi? You haven't been on the podcast in forever. Do you want to come say hi? No, not yet. So I've read a lot in the month of January. And um, the month of January was a pretty busy month uh, as well. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. So before I tell you about the books I read in January, I'm going to tell you about a short story I read in 2019 by an Irish author called Dervila McTiernan. It was a short story, I think it was somewhere around five hours, three, five hours, um, called Sisters. Noise. And um, it was about two sisters, one who's a lawyer and one who's a police officer. And it was a little bit of a mystery. There was a murder in it. And the two sisters were involved in the work around that murder. And I just really liked it a lot. So then I saw that she had a couple of novels. And it turned out that the Sisters was a prequel to a series that she has started. And so I actually read the two first books in the series. There is a third one that is coming to Audible this year in 2020. I cannot wait for it. I absolutely loved her books. Loved Sisters, the short story. It was one of my favorite short stories of last year. And, and then I really enjoyed her first two books. The first one was called The Ruin. The second was called The Scholar. They're both mysteries. Um, the main character is a police officer whose name is Cormac Riley. And uh, there's an interesting feeling about the books. They're well written. Um, there's a really nice human aspect to them. And I find the character development really, really quite rich. So I really enjoyed those. Consequently, I also read my first uh, Louise Penny book. Louise Penny is a Canadian mystery writer and she has many, many books in her series of Armand Gamache, who is a um, Quebec Montreal police officer, or well, not a police officer, he's a detective of some sort, I can't remember exactly his title. And uh, so I read the first in the Gamache series, it's called Still Life. And I also really enjoyed that. I'd have to say that I actually enjoy the Dervla McTiernan books a little bit more. Um, but I think that may be partly because I didn't really love the reader. Uh, what was his name? Andy Sims, I think, who read the Louise Penny book. The woman who reads the Durbla McTiernan books, Aoife McMahon, I believe is her name, she is brilliant. I love the way she reads. I struggled a little bit with the way this person read the Louise Penny book, and so I think that took a little bit away from my experience of the book. But I am definitely going to venture forth and uh, listen to a second one um, in the near future. I've already gotten the second book. Um, and just have those as, as light, fun books. In between those books, I read uh, I Know Why the, Bir the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. Now this was a book that was written, when did she write that? Quite a few years ago and it's, um, it's an autobiographical telling of her childhood. And I don't know if you've read any Maya Angelou, but she's a very celebrated African-American writer. I had never read any of her work, and I'm so glad that I read this. It was just, wasn't always easy to read or listen to, and she actually read the story for Audible. And she's got a very interesting way of speaking, and I'm really glad that she read it. Um, and it was just a really well, really well written. Each chapter was almost like a vignette from a part of her life. And it was just almost like a painting. You know, you really got a sense of the scene. And it was just really well written, really well told. At times, very matter of factly. Um, at times, somewhat angry. At times, matter of fact. Um, at times, comical. Uh, poignant and it really gave you a sense of life in the 
30s and the early 40s in the United States for a young black woman. And it was just, it was really good. So I'm looking forward to reading. She has another one from later in her life and her adulthood, um, early adulthood. So I'm looking forward to reading that at some point this year um, because I really, and actually the book sort of left you with a bit of a cliffhanger. And so it made me want to read the next one. So January was a very busy month of reading for me. Uh, it was also a busy month for our family life. Um, I started my new job, which had a learning curve like this, and it's kind of gone down a little bit, but there was a lot, a lot to learn. So it was very full in my mind for the month of January. We also had a visit from uh, the two cousins that the kids have in Uruguay. They came for two and a half weeks in January, so we were busy with them. and. Um, yeah, we just had lots of nice walks and enjoyed uh, January winter time. So it was a great time. And I have a teenager who is quietly coming down the stairs, trying not to disturb the podcast, which is very sweet. <laughs> but that does bring me to the end of the podcast, actually. Um, so that was basically it for the month of January. All the things that were made, all the things that I'm working on, the reading that I did, and the few accidental and not so accidental purchases. So I hope that this podcast has found you well, and um, I hope we'll see you soon. Probably end of February, early March, something like that. It seems like once a month is what is working out well for me. And let me think if there's anything else that I wanted to say. Oh, there was one last thing that I wanted to tell you. Um, last time I showed you guys the, uh, the soap that I use for washing my delicates and my socks, which was a Pearwall, a German company. And a couple of people commented in YouTube, in the comment section, that you can buy it on Amazon. And lo and behold, you can. You can buy just about anything on Amazon. And so I will be ordering some of that one day when I need some again. So thank you very much to those of you who, uh, who let me know about that. So take care, friends. Happy, happy crafting to you, and we'll see you in about a month. Take care. Bye-bye. I forgot to tell you something, so I'm back for just a wee moment. I'm going to be leaving you off with some images of sweater, well, not sweaters, of patterns that I have bought recently. So you'll get a little slideshow of some of the patterns that are uh, in my library on Ravelry. So enjoy. Take care. We go dancing in the rain, riding on a midnight train, away so slowly. And the moon is looking down on the sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely. I love you only I love you only All the birds have taken flight It's their favorite time of night when they can hear you from somewhere near you and the palm trees try to bend to be closer to their friends they're made of magic reach out and grab it we go dancing in Sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely.